Hey guys, what's going on? Name Groundwalker here with another review. This is gonna be a duo review, um, but you only see one figure because this is the only figure I am doing the packaging of. So it's a duo review of the McFarlane Harry Potter from basically the Deathly Hollows part one and two, and then the McFarlane Voldemort from, again, the same um, movie. And the reason I say that is this Voldemort technically is basically his look from uh, um, the Goblet of Fire, book four, movie four, on. But the Harry, his specific um, jacket and outfit he wears that's in this line is depicted in the seventh movie. Um, so that's why I kind of say it's from Deathly Hollows, but technically this Voldemort could be from any of the movies. But anyway, uh, let's go over the packaging. The packaging is the same on both figures besides, of course, some of the images, but pretty much it's all the same. Um, you get the name, obviously, at the bottom, Lord of Voldemort, uh, Wizarding World kind of logo that's been going on all their movies and products they've been releasing. Um, you got the Harry Potter on the bottom right, that's on all the figures. Then you just kind of rotate that over and you get the Hogwarts symbol up here. Um, just some cool, you know, Harry Potter newspaper design and the Lord Voldemort at the bottom. And then you get the whole basically set um, images of them all. Let's see if I can focus that or maybe up the exposure for you guys. Sorry. Um, uh, when the review actually happens, it'll be much more detailed. But anyway, so we got Ron Weasley, Lord Voldemort, Hermione Granger, and Harry Potter all in the set, all with their own Patronuses, except. I must have missed it, but my Harry Potter didn't come with antlers, so I must have missed those. So I got to put my antlers on my Harry Potter because I didn't see those. But all what their Patronus is, and you get Voldemort with Nagini, his snake. Um, and then Buckbeak. I don't know who Buckbeak comes with. I haven't seen him in anything um, or any images of him. Um, so I'll have to research that. And I'm, I'm hoping to get Hermione and um, Ron, but I mainly wanted Harry and Voldemort for the classic action. I love Harry photographs well. So anyway, then on this side, you got not much else besides um, what was on that side, just more kind of Harry Potter newspaper magical stuff. Um, so let's get to it. Let's open them and then we'll take a look at both figures. Okay, guys, here we go. We got the McFarlane Lord Voldemort and Harry Potter, both from the Deathly Hollows out of their packaging. And I'm torn. I'm, I really am. It's 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 classic McFarlane is what I'm kind of trying to say here. And the reason why I say that is because McFarlane isn't super reliable. You know, they're not an amazing toy company. Although their McFarlane spawn they just put out, as well as their Fortnite figures have been doing very well. A lot of the movie stuff that they give us, um, Harry Potter, for example, the Call of Duty figures. I mean, there's so many others are fairly, you know, crappy quality. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They're pretty crappy quality. And I find these two in a mix of both of those situations where they're pretty crappy, but still good, if that makes sense. So we'll take a look at each figure individually and what they come with, and then do some, you know, just kind of my overall thoughts of that. I don't know if I'm gonna do display, um, because I really want to do an in-depth display if I display these two against each other using cutouts and some really cool light painting and maybe effects. But I wouldn't be able to do that right now because I'm kind of on a schedule of doing other ACB setups that are easier for the competition. But I do want to get these guys in the display together. But it, real quick, if you were going to shoot these two, I would suggest doing portraits, um, really close-ups with a macro lens or something because although the sculpts are pretty good and the paint jobs are pretty good, the whole figures as a whole and their articulation isn't great, so you're gonna really be getting vanilla poses out of these guys. So we'll take a look at Harry first. Here we go guys, taking a look at the McFarlane Harry Potter. So, and sorry guys, it might get loud, but my face is close to my camera while I'm examining this guy. Um, you know, it looks good on some photos, but you gotta be careful, because this honestly looks nothing like Daniel Radcliffe. It's a pretty crappy sculpt that has some resemblance to him, but the more I look at it, the more I'm dis displeased with it. Um, it still works for a Harry Potter, don't get me wrong. Um, and I like these clothes. Um, they definitely are from the Deathly Hollows movies. Um, and I like the paint. The paint, McFarlane always does a pretty good job with the paint, you know, getting this weather details, you know, the shirt, the jacket, the jeans specifically right here. Um, they do a great, great, great um, job of that. So that's always good to see. But, you know, they're still lacking in some categories. So that's why I'm, you know, I'm not super happy. Mainly articulation. But looking at the sculpt, again, like I said, it's not really Daniel Radcliffe. These eyes are, uh, glasses are not removable. I don't know why you would ever remove them. Unless you wanted to use them, I guess. But I don't know why you'd ever remove them because, you know, Harry always has his glasses on. He comes with this wand, which is um, basically Draco Malfoy's wand design. Which, now looking back on it, Harry has Draco's wand in the Deathly Hollows. That's his wand he uses. 
um, because Hermione breaks his in Godric's Hollow, or I guess coming out of Godric's Hollow. So that makes sense that he has Draco Malfoy's um, wand, um, which looks just like Draco Malfoy's wand. There's really no detail on it. You know, it's a pretty simple design. Um, I'd like to see them tackle other Harry Potters with Harry Potter's wand. So just anything basically, f um, you know, before Deathly Hallows Part 1. Um, specifically, man, I would love Mezco or any other toy company. Please give us a Harry, um, you know, just in his like third or fourth year, or maybe even fifth year in like Harry Potter robes and please make them soft goods. I would die. SHF, you know, they didn't make bad figures with their hard, um, their hard cloaks, but I would love that. It'd be amazing. So let's talk about articulation and then, um, we'll actually, let's talk about one other accessory he has and then we'll get into articulation. So. Set him here. He's a little hard to stand up because I'll talk about it in a little. I'm just gonna set him down because we're gonna talk about this. So his other accessory he comes with is boom. It's a deer. Um, this is his Patronus. You know how Snape's, or I believe it's a stag, and then um, and then Snape's is like a doe, like Lily's was, but James could more um, could. Crap, what's the name of um, when you transform into an animal in the Harry Potter universe? Someone put it down below because I'm, I'm spacing on it, but he could transform into a deer. Um, when I first opened this and took photos with it, which you guys will see at the end of this review, I didn't know there was antlers that came with there, which I don't know why I didn't know that because Harry's Patronus is obviously a deer, um, but it looked like it was a doe or, you know, like a uh, female deer with no horns. So anyway, so I got those on. So this looks good. Um, it can do great light piping. Um, so what I did is I had this little light table. Um, that i had under it and then it just lit it up completely so that was a really cool thing you know what in fact we'll do that real quick just to show you guys so this is the light table um you know it can turn on like this and then if you just put this over it look at that look and you know again this isn't the light table's you know brightest settings i think that's the brightest it goes and if i turn up the <coughs> exposure you have some really cool looking Patronus effects. And it looks really good, you know, it looks like a real actual Patronus charm in the Harry Potter universe would. Um, you know, especially if you like kind of crop it right there and then you have Harry in the back, you know, doing some cool like Patronus stuff like this, you know, but it looks like a real Patronus. So really cool. I would highly suggest for figure photography in general, you guys pick up a light table. Um, the one I have is a little small, so I'm looking into getting a bigger one. But for now, this is the one I use. So. Um, I would recommend you guys get one because they're, it provides some really cool soft lighting from underneath. So yeah, so it comes with that and then let's look at his articulation because this is the department with this figure that I'm pretty upset about, I guess. But you know, I'm not really upset because McFarlane's known for this, but he can look that high up, which is actually pretty good. He can look, oh, oh wow. I didn't know his head had the ball peg in it. Interesting. There we go. So we can look about that far down, which isn't a lot. He can pivot quite a bit, which is great. That's really good because they use the ball joint system. There's no separate neck articulation. Um, his arms can go that far out, which is not bad. Um, he's got a bicep swivel that's a little stiff um, and it's obviously awkwardly cut to the point that it looks a little weird. Um, but again, minor gripes with this. Uh, let's turn down the exposure a little bit for you guys. Then we have his elbows, which if you work at it, are double jointed, which is great. You know, McFarlane always has this very stiff and I will very much, see this is what I'm talking about. I will very much recommend you guys be super careful articulating McFarlane figures in general, specifically these movie type of figures. Fortnite, you're pretty good with, but movie type of figures because their articulation is very brittle. The figures are very brittle, so you can easily break. Not like that. That was just a snap off, easily connectable, but like actually break. I've done it to so many of my McFarlane figures, so be very careful. Um, then he's got separate articulation down here. I really don't love this. Um, if you guys can tell, it's really awkward you know <laughs> there should have been a joint right here at the end of the sleeve but the, basically the way they're doing it is that the hand is not like so for example i'll use lord voldemort for an example real quick um before we get into his review but as you can see um his hand peg is you know his hand sticking out of the cloak so that's where the peg is but this the hand is supposed to be inside the jacket a bit um so they couldn't really cut it i guess inside the jacket so they cut it down here but i just think it looks awkward and i much would rather would have had his hands fully out of the jacket and then a the, uh, uh, peg there so it doesn't look awkward when you pose it but nothing you can do there. Um, you can just kind of try to line it up as best you can. But yeah, so that's, again, a big bummer. But it's okay. 
um, just trying to rotate this to where it looks normal. Then he's got a diaphragm joint um, that's pretty horrible in terms of crunching back and forward. I mean, you guys can see, look how, like that's not, that's not even a crunch and back not even a crunch. I get the back because obviously this jacket's gonna hinder it, but the front, are you kidding me? This can't go far at all. That is insanely disappointing. Um, the jacket's not made out of a super uh, soft material. It's kind of hard. You know, you can still bend it a little bit and it won't stick or anything, but it's, you know, it's still durable. Um, then you have his legs. This is where I really caution McFarlane figure uh, collectors. Do not pose hard with your legs, like doing splits and stuff, because they will break. I've had two sets of legs of mine break. So we can kick uh, about that far, not pushing it too much forward. Um, and then about that far back, so. Um, you can get some kind of walking poses. He's got double jointed knees, but mainly kind of single jointed because you can't really, because the sculpt get further back that much. Um, again, sorry guys about my voice. I'm gonna work on trying to find a better way to record my voice so it doesn't jump around from being super loud to super quiet. Um, then his feet, this is also one of my problems. This is why he's difficult to stand. They have good articulation, but they're really loose on, and, and I think this is just my version, but they're really loose. Like, look at this. Like, like it's super loose to the point where it's like, like it's super easy to like move it, which is great, but it's hard to stand him up because his feet move quite a bit by themselves, mainly the left one. Um, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of finagle it a little bit. Um, and he leans quite a bit in his photos, so you just gotta be careful. But, um, but yeah, so that's Harry. Again, like I said, it's a good figure for a Harry Potter figure. I'm thankful we at least have one, but I'm hoping a better company steps up and rises to the challenge to take on the Harry Potter mantle to give us accurate figures. So let's take a look at Voldemort. Taking a look at the Dark Lord himself, he who must not be named, I'm also torn on this figure. Now, for very much different reasons. I actually like the Harry Potter figure more than this one, and I will tell you why. I love the cloth goods cloak. I love the look of this on Voldemort. I think it's perfectly movie accurate. I love it. It's Velcro down here, so you could technically take it off if you wanted to. Um, I won't, but it's cool that you can put that on, like, you know, Red Skull for an endgame look, or you can put it on, um, on Sith Lords. Like, that's a really cool ability that we got with this guy. I'm really happy about that. Um, but I just, I don't love his articulation. I think it's actually some of the worst I've ever seen on a McFarlane figure. And, and we'll get to that section, you know, we'll get to that part of the review. But honestly, it's very bad. Um, so let's just talk about the sculpt and general look of him. Um, if you can't tell, I'm trying to mimic Hogwarts with the hardwood floor and the, you know, the stone kind of castle. Um, but anyway, so he's got this cloak, right, which is pretty cool. This is mainly the big thing about Voldemort, right, is he just, he wears this black cloak everywhere. I think it turns a little more green in the last film, so I don't know why this isn't a little more green to represent that. But, I mean, from the Goblet of Fire on to uh, Deathly Hallows Part Two, he wears this robe, basically. Um, and you know, his white hands look good. I think the face, actually they nailed the Voldemort face. And, and the nice thing about Voldemort is it's not a face where you need to have, um, I'm trying to remember the actor's name. Um, oh my God, it's gonna kill me if I can't remember this. Cause I know him because he's in James Bond. He's in a ton of movies, Kingsman, but for some reason I can't remember him, but I think it starts with, I think it's Ralph. I think that's his first name is Ralph. I'm not hundred percent sure. Drop the actor's name in the comments, but anyway, Voldemort's not, you know, you don't need the actor's appearance because it's Voldemort, you know, he's scaly, he's ugly, he has no nose, like, there's really no, like, person under there, almost. He's just, like, a being, a villain being. Of course, there's a person, Tom Riddle, but point being, it's not something you na need to nail the actor's likeness of, and I think they did a good job anyway of nailing the actor's likeness and just Voldemort's likeness and his, and his presence. Like, this figure looks really good, but I just, the articulation ruins it for me. Um, so, he comes with the Elder Wand, um, again, a very thick version of it the same with Draco Malfoy's wand they're both very thick versions of their wands but nonetheless the details are still pretty good um, sorry guys we again we got a puppy so underneath the robe he just is basically in all black um, a whole black bodysuit basically underneath this so you're not really gonna want to be taking the robe off for any pictures anyway um, but yeah so and then you got his white feet, obviously, which are really weird in the movie, you know? You can, like, see his feet in the dirt when he <laughs> comes back alive. It's weird. Um, but, yeah, so, basically, that's kind of it for the skull because there's not a lot here. It's just black and then the white parts. So, let's talk about his accessories. Mainly, his one accessory comes with besides the Elder Wand, which is what we already talked about. And it's actually a really cool accessory. I'm super happy we got. But it's Nagini, his snake. Um, 
I actually really like this. I think this is going to be very useful for other displays, you know. Um, I think I think in Hydra there's a type of snake. I'm trying to remember what. Um, and I know, you know, it's just great for, like, other animals that I can use in displays and stuff. And I, I think it look, it's a really good-looking Nagini. Um, and it is articulated, surprisingly. So it's articulated at the head. Um, it can just move, no hinge, but it can just kind of rotate around 360. Then it's rotated right here. And again, the problem also with that is you gotta be careful because some of these, obviously, that you know, they sculpted it in such a way that yes, you can articulate it, but it's not gonna look as good as its natural form. Um, so for example, there's a joint down here, right? You can articulate it like this, but what the hell? You know, now it's kind of like, it looks almost cut in half, like a little severed. So that's why you gotta be, gotta be careful when taking photos of it like this. But, um, but yeah, I think it looks phenomenal. I think they did a great job. So again, going over articulation, it can rotate the head at this point here, um, at this point down here, they already talked about. And then at, I think, Oh, wow, there's really no more points. I thought there was more, because there's a lot of, if you guys can't tell, there's a lot of incisions, it almost looks like, and it's not the pattern. It literally looks like incisions, almost, for the most part, like really deep ones, but apparently it only has um, one, two, three spots of articulation. But again, you can still get it looking really cool um, for your display. Sorry, guys, I know you couldn't see that. Um, really cool for your display, so I really like the Nagini prop. So going over Voldemort's articulation, the stuff that pisses me off the most about this figure. So just first right off the bat, I want to talk about this. His arms can't go down to the sides of his body, which pisses me off. I might try the hot water treatment on him, but like it takes so much effort to just hold them down here to get them to stay down there for a little bit. So that's really annoying. But anyway his head articulation so he can look that far up which isn't terrible um he can look that far down which is actually better than harry potter can i believe so that's good um i can't see what is uh lower body but he can he can move his arms that far up so that's awesome um but down see it's down that he can't go to his sides so i'm trying i might want to um hot water that and, and try that out and see why the hell that doesn't work but anyway so um he's got an upper bicep swivel it feels like he's got double jointed elbows which is awesome um and then he's got his hand peg there which is much better than the harry potter figure for that reason um then he's got it feels like a diaphragm joint that crunches better than harry's does it crunches that far forward and none at all back he's also got a waist cut which i don't think harry had because of what he was wearing um that can help him crunch a little further forward a little further back and it can rotate there so that's good um I, let me double check that because I feel like there no there wasn't a waist joint there okay but there is one so he did he just has this is what I was confused on guys so if you guys can tell there's the upper diaphragm joint right here but then there's a waist cut that's above his belly button a really weird design by McFarlane that helps I guess a little more crunch and pivot maybe but it doesn't really allow any movement that way so I was wrong so there you go next you have the McFarlane legs that can kick that far out can kick that far forward and that far back like none back literally none at all so you got to be careful how you are doing your walking poses um, he's got double jointed knees which are good and then his feet can hinge up and down his he has toe articulation and ankle pivot so again, the main gripe with articulation, I wouldn't say it's terrible, I kind of overstated that, but it's that the hands can't, or the arms can't go all the way down to the body, because you want him relaxed, right? You want him, you know, with his hands kind of by his side, just being maniacal, right? This is the Dark Lord, one of the baddest baddies in all the universe. And it's really difficult when you can't get his arms to his side. Right now they look decent, but you know, they're still not where I would want them to be. So, oh, he fell off. So let's, <laughs> let's fix him there. Um, and again, I don't think I'm gonna do a display. Um, you guys, it'll probably cut to a display that I did, um, that I've already done a picture of, of Harry with his Patronus in the woods. And like I said, I'm going to, sorry guys, again, my voice probably just dropped off because I got away from the, um, away from the figure and I'm away from the camera. But point being, it's really awesome figures. I don't think I'm gonna pick up Ron and Hermione because I just, you know, Harry and Voldemort is the iconic, you know, hero versus villain right of this harry potter universe dumbledore too and that's all i really need i don't need ron and harry or ron and hermione because if i want ron and hermione i want ones that look really good um and they don't look good so there's really no point so i'm probably not going to shoot them as a group if they don't look good you know harry and voldemort i can do because they're iconic like they have a lot of battles so point being i'm definitely gonna do display with these guys look out for it in a future shooting figures episode but right now i'm kind of you know busy with 
all of the contests um, that are coming out. Expect two episodes of Shooting Figures coming after this review, as well as probably reviews on the episode um, five, Empire Strikes Back, Yoda, the um, Black Widow white suit figure, and then the leader figure, I for, uh, Leaders of the Abomination Wave, I forget what wave the Black, uh, Black Widow is. So look out for those reviews as well, but those those will come after shooting figures. And again, like I've always said, join the group The Grind on Facebook, learn how to take photos, join the ACBA group, follow me on Instagram and other accounts. And until next time, I'm your boy, Aiden. See you later. That's crispy.